Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, though, a word to all those late vacationists who haven't yet discovered Horlicks tablets. I'd like to remind you that these wholesome, tasty tablets are fine to have along whatever type vacation you prefer. On motor trips, fishing expeditions, or on the golf course, they come in mighty handy. A few of the tablets dissolved in the mouth when you begin to feel hungry or tired will satisfy your hunger, keep you on your toes, help you get the most out of your vacation. Thousands have found this out. Women use them around the house or when they're shopping to ward off hunger and fatigue. The men folk, when at work, find Horlick's tablets keep them going at top speed on days when they can't get out to eat on time. Youngsters go for Horlick's too, and mothers find that it doesn't spoil their children's appetites. Get a flask to try. A handy small one costs you just a dime. And your dealer carries larger sizes, too, in both natural and chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. You know Lum has become involved in the promotion of a fake silver mine, and Squire Skimp, the promoter, has absconded with the money and left him to face the enraged stockholders. Lum has been hiding in Abner's barn for the past few days, fearing violence on the part of the investors. Yesterday, Abner called them together and read a letter from Lum protesting his innocence. Evidently, the stockholders have listened to reason. For today, we find Lum back at his home, discussing the matter with his old friend Dick Huddleston. Listen. Yeah, I thought you'd left town. No. <laughs> no, I was right over there in Abner's barn loft all the time. Well, well, it's a shame that you ever got mixed up with Squire Skimp and that silver mine business loan. Yeah, but I still don't see why the stockholders are blaming me. Squire's the one that got all the money for the stock we sold. Yeah, but you were the president of the company. That's the reason they're looking to you for their money back. Well, yeah, I was a president in name, but I never had nothing to do with the running of the company. Now, that's where you made a mistake, too. That's just exactly why Squire offered to make you president, so that all the blame would fall right on your shoulder. Yeah. Hey, Granny, it looks like if it ain't one thing, it's half a dozen or something else. Uh, yeah. Well, you've lost a lot of friends around here by it, Lum. Well, I don't know where I have or not, Dick. Body that'll turn again you at a time like this weren't much of a friend to start with. That's the way I look at it. Like this morning, I went out on the rolling store with Abner. And folks had come out in front to buy stuff, and quick as they seen me in the truck, they'd turn right around and walk right back in the house. Well, I'll declare I had to take out and come on back to the place here and let Abner and Cedric make the round. Yeah, I know how they feel, Lum. They've been coming down at the store talking to me about it. There ain't no four people in town hardly that'll speak to me. I walked in Moe's Moose Barbershop this morning to get a shave. Four or five fellas sitting around in there, and they just sort of got right up and left out for you to come in. Well. And Moe said he was too busy to wait on me. Well, hmm. I'll declare If you could just figure out some way to reimburse the stockholders, I believe everything would be all right. Figure out some way to do what to them. Give them the money back if they invested in the stock. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'd love to do, all right, if I had it. Squire's got all the money, though. Over $7,000 worth of stock he sold in this town. Did he sell that much, sure enough? Yes, sir, he told me that himself. Now then, he's plumb out of the company. See, he give me what stock there was left. Of course, he got me to sign a statement that I was consuming all the responsibilities of the company. Yeah, I know, and that's why they're looking to you for their money, too, huh? Yeah. I don't know what to do about it. I just might not have worried myself sick over it. Well, you've got to do something if you intend to stay in Pine Ridge, Lum. That's all there is to it. Yeah, I know it. I know it. If they just give me a chance, I might could take the mine and make a success out of it after all. But now then, they want me to turn the management over to somebody else. Well, maybe that'd be the best way out of it for you, Lum. Well, if I'm going to be responsible for it, though, I want to look after running it myself. I'm getting the blame now for the mistakes one fella made. I don't want to go through that again. Yeah, sure. I can understand how you feel. Wait, wait a minute. There's somebody at the door. Oh, yeah. Come in. Well, come in, Abner. Uh, Lum, I was just down to... Well, howdy, Dick. How are you, Abner? Oh, just only tolerably, Dick. Only tolerably. Looks like everything's going right, back or wrong, looks like. How did you do with the store after I left, Abner? Well, that's what I come over to tell you, Lum. Looks like we just may as well close the thing up and quit trying to run it. We've taken in a dollar and sixty cents on the whole round. Well, I'll be dead. A dollar and sixty cents. Yes, sir. Well, I thought you were doing a big business with the store. Well, we was up until, uh, well, uh, up until, uh, I just here in the last few days. Up until they all got mad at me. I know what you're thinking, Emma. And I tell you, I, 
I ain't going to stay in your way, neither. You've got to invest in that store, and I believe the best thing for me to do is just unsolve partnerships with him, just turn it over to him. Oh, no, you don't. No, sir, I don't get we started out to be partner, and we're going to stay partner. Well, there ain't no use to feel that way about it, Abner. If I stay in the store, it's going to be bankrupted the first thing you know anyway. All right, it'll just be bankrupted then. But as long as it's open for business, you're going to be a half-owner. Well, here, uh, you fellas want to talk business. So I better get on out of here. No, sit still, Dick. You ain't bothering us. No, I've got to go anyway, Lom. <laughs> better get on back to my store before it goes bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure appreciate you coming over, Dick. It's right smart of a comfort to know that I've got a few friends that are standing by me. Well, I want you to know, Lom, if there's anything I can do to help, I'll be glad to do it. Well, thank you, Dick. Thank you. And come back again. Yeah, I will, Lom. So long. So long. And goodbye. Granny, there's a fine fella there who was on. Sure goes. Yeah, yeah, it's all right, fellas. Sure is. No, Abner, there ain't no use in me standing in your way. It don't matter none about me, but you've got a family dependence on me. That you. don't make no difference. What kind of a fellow would I be to break up partners with you just on account of a bunch of numbskills turning again you? No, sir. I'm a standing by you. That Caleb Wee Hunt jumps on you, I'll be right there to back you up, too. If Caleb Wee Hunt jumps on me. Oh, yeah. He was over there a while ago making his brags about what all he's going to do with if he never got his money back. Oh, well, I ain't worrying none about Caleb. Well, now, he was talking awful strong on telling everybody about it. Yeah, I recollect that old lettered saying of mine, a barking dog never bites. Well, now, if he... Huh? I say, a barking dog never bites. Well, I'm talking about Caleb Wee Hunt, the blacksmith. I was, too. I just said a barking dog never bites. Oh, well, I don't know about that, though, Lon. Old Blue, that dog of mine, barks at everything that comes on the place. Anybody don't think he'll bite, just ought to try to come in that yard of mine at night. Well, that's an old saying of mine, though. If that dog of yours barks, he won't bite. Well, that's just all you know about it. I know, I saw him. He just might not take the leg off of Moe's moose here a while back. Well, your dog is an exception, then. No, he ain't nothing but a hound. But he'll bark and bite both. I know that. Well, what I meant by barking is bragging like Caleb's doing. Oh, well, no. <laughs> no, Blue don't brag now. He can't even talk. Hey, you're, you're right about that, Tom. If a dog could talk, he wouldn't have to bite. He could just tell folks to stay out of the yard. I ain't even talking about dogs, Abner. I said Why, it. you was, too. You said barking dogs That's never bite. That's just an expression. I was talking about Caleb. Well, no, me, I wouldn't allow that Caleb would bark or bite neither one. Why, of course he wouldn't. Well, what did you say he would, Father? I just said on account of him bragging so much, he was like a barking dog. He wouldn't bite. Well, barking dogs will bite, though. All right, all right. You say they will, and I say they won't. Now, let's just forget about it. Yeah, you can forget about it if you want to, but old Blue will remind you of it if you try to come on my place for the night, I'll tell you that. All right, all right. Blue barks and bites both. Now, just let it go. Well, now, no, no, now, Lum, now, I wouldn't say that. He don't bark and bite at the same time. He can't do that. See, when he's biting, he's got his mouth so full he can't bark. I don't care what Blue does. He can do anything he wants to. I don't care. No, he can't really. Now, that's where you're wrong again. There's two things he can't do, I know. He can't come in the house or run the chicken. There's a best of this stump of daylight out of it. Well, stop talking about the dog. I've got too many things on my mind without arguing about that. I've got to figure out some way to get these stockholders back in a good humor with me. I know. Lots of dogs barking by both too. I'll go hang around for it. So get him to buy it. And Granny, if I could just figure out some way to make a big hero out of myself. Then I'd have them down on their hands and knees begging my party. Of course, I don't know about him. Maybe they don't do both. There's some way for me to save the town. Like Paul Revere's. Ride over the community and warn everybody about something. I don't know what, but... Or if the enemy was charging a town, soldiers coming in here, I could rush through shot and shell and rescue a flag. <laughs> I could say, shoot if you must at this old gray head, but save our country's flag, I said. Huh? Or if there's a little hole in the dam, I could stick my finger in the hole and plug it up so it wouldn't flood the whole valley's water and save our women and children. What dam? Huh? What well, if there was one here, and oh. Pine Ridge was in a valley instead of up on a hill this way. Oh, yeah, you might put it if it was different. Yeah. Looks like them fellas in the old days had more chances to make heroes out of themselves. They could just go out and fight one of them dragons with nine or ten heads just any old time the notion suck them. 
Nine or ten heads. Yeah, they were dangerous. Well, now, Lom, now, if a dog had nine or ten heads, he could bark and bite at the same time. He could bark with one while he was biting. Abner, if you say bark or bite one more time, be that blame if I don't bite you. Oh. <laughs> well, I know you don't bite, Lom. You're just saying that. <laughs> if I could rescue somebody, throw you in the mill pond and save you, dive right well, in. Now, here, wait a minute now, Lom. Now, don't start that. You can't swim a lick, and you know it. Yeah. I don't want you trying to save me. That's right. That won't do. No, sir. <laughs> Good thing we thought about that, Wayne. Let's see. If we could stop you on a sawmill carriage and the villain was fixing to saw you in two, I could wreck in and throw a pistol on him and save you. Wait a minute. Now, Wait a minute. now, there ain't no use talking about that, neither, Lom. I can tell you right Wait now. Wait a minute. Be quiet, Abner. If you're getting... I believe I'm getting eyed. What's he squinting your eyes up that away for? I'm studying when I do that. I'm studying hard. Oh. The county judge always squints his eyes up that away. Yes, sir. It'll sure work, Abner. It's the same. It'll work, I tell you. It's what work? What, what are you talking about, Lon? It's just what we'll do. Granny's Abner, you're going to be kidnapped and held for ransoms, and I'm going to come to your rescue and bring you back safe and sound to your loved ones. Kidnapped? <laughs> yes, sir. We'll make arrangements to have you kidnapped tomorrow. If I don't make a hero out of myself, I'd love to know. <laughs> it seems when Lum gets in trouble, Abner is invariably his vehicle for escape. If you're looking for a fine, wholesome, bodybuilding food for these youngsters of yours, just let them drink plenty of Horlicks. Rich in precious vitamins, in bodybuilding minerals, in phosphorus and calcium. Horlicks is especially fine for growing children. It helps build strong bones, sound teeth, and healthy, husky bodies. That's why medical and child-feeding authorities have recommended Horlicks for over 50 years. Here are a few suggestions. Give it to them for breakfast instead of coffee, tea, or milk. They'll much prefer it, and it's so much better for them, too. So much easier to digest. Or give it to them between meals, or for lunch, or for a cool, refreshing bedtime snack. Horlicks, you know, is always welcome with the children. So get a package from your dealer in either natural or chocolate flavor, whichever your youngsters prefer. You'll find a score of uses for it around the home. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time. <laughs> <laughs>